All right, what's up, Alabama fans? It's Andrew Bone here with BamaInsider.com. Got a special guest on the show today. It is Earl Little Senior. Earl, man, uh, your son last week announced for the Crimson Tide on uh, during the early signing period on Wednesday. I know that had to be a special moment uh, for you and your family. Yeah, man, um, it was a uh, it was a great feeling. You know, it's something that he uh, that he was looking forward to, and uh, he finally got it off his chest. You know, and, and let the world know what he wanted to where he wanted to go to school. So it was a uh, it was a fun experience, but, you know, at times it can get stressful, you know, and me being a former player and highly recruited, going through all that stuff, it was nowhere like how it is now. <laughs> you know? Those are the dinosaur years, you know, but uh, but it was great, man. It was great to see uh, him. And um, it actually, we did, the, we did the other players early that morning at 9 a.m. at Heritage. Then, you know, him and Marvin had to come back at, um, at what, at 430. And uh, we did it. So it was great, man. It was great to see these, see these kids, you know, fulfill their dream. And now the hard work starts, the real work. Absolutely. Well, let, let's talk about the start of the recruiting journey for your son. Um, I know he started getting recruited at an early age. But when did when did the interest from Alabama really start? When that when did that offer come in? Uh, it really began when he was a freshman. Um, I was coaching at FIU during that time. And um, he uh, coached Saban and whoever saw him. Um, and but Coach Saban was communicating with uh, Pat Senior, and um, that's how it got noticed. And then um, he had a hell of a sophomore year, and then um, they um, that's when they started picking up. You know, you started getting the interest, and you and you hearing, and then uh, going into the next year, which was the COVID, um, they wanted him to come up um, to the camp, so he was going to come up to the camp. You know, uh, but we couldn't because of COVID. And um, but we was actually we was actually we was able to go to the um, to the LSU game. So we went to that game, and uh, but that's when it, that's when it started. But then after COVID hit, I mean, I'm, in this past January, that's when everything. But he be, he been wanting, man. I remember having the first conversation with with those guys and and Pat Big um, Pat Senior. It was after it was a Saturday morning. I never forget. I won't forget it because um I had to take him um we went we him and I both we went to um to to, to uh, he had a little um, little little back problem nothing serious you know we went to a chiropractor whatever and um. And sure enough, Pat was like, hey, man, they want him bad. Uh, so you're going to be getting a phone call soon. And sure enough, I got a phone call. And uh, that, that was crazy, you know. Absolutely. Crazy good. Crazy in a good way. <laughs> I bet. Now, I, I saw something he tweeted the other day. Uh, he said something about LSU was probably the, the top school on his list early on in the process. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, they actually were. Uh, they um, he, he had this thing for LSU at one point. And it's crazy. I was going through my phone today, and I was looking at uh, – I said I was going to post it. Um, it was this picture of him at uh, one of our friends' house. They threw him a little surprise, little birthday. He had an LSU Scully on, you know. <laughs> and then um, he, uh, but yeah, he uh, he just had he he just respected those guys, you know, and, and you know, uh, and what they did over there in the secondary. But it he was he was young, you know. And and I remember I remember he asked he said to me he said Dad he said I want to commit and I was like whoa 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 I said. <laughs> I said, you have to wait. Don't make an emotional decision. I said, it's a whole recruiting process. You got two more years to go through all this stuff. You know, you make an emotional decision and, you know, yeah, you get likes and all that stuff. And then 24 hours is, is gone away. I say, this is, this is a process that you have to go through. Mm-hmm. And um, I say, so just take it slow. You're going to have your opportunities. And, you know, and then when that, that day come, you present it. And, you know, he and after that, that was that. And then he went through the whole recruiting process, you know, and um he made his decision when he when he was ready to make his decision. And and Pat, if people don't remember, Pat was a was considered an LSU a heavy LSU lean uh, during his recruitment before he went to Bama. Yeah, because you know his um, you know his family from Louisiana. They're from they're from New Orleans, not New Orleans, New Orleans. Uh, so yeah, you know I know I played my first two years in the league in New Orleans, so I got a little little, little Cajun in me, like I would say. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that, yeah, a lot of people was wondering, um, if, you know, that thought that he was going to go to Alabama. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, LSU. Well, Pat's now with the Broncos, starring there in his rookie year. Uh, how, how much did did he talk to uh, to Earl throughout the process? Uh, did he were, was he able to give him any advice? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I know they uh, I know they friends. They close. You know, we close to the family. Both families were real, real close to each other. Um, and um, Pat's a great kid. You know, he's he's been to a few of our practices during the spring. You know, and of course during his off week, I think it was an off week. He came down here. To one, of the, yeah, he came down after one of our games, and uh, he spoke said said a few words uh, when he spoke to the team afterwards. But um, 
But uh, yeah, he he he's. I'm pretty sure he's he he's been in Earl ear. You know, I know I know I, I know I know Jalen Waddle been in, been this ear a few times. He's been out to the school. He came to a couple games. Oh, you cool. know, so I, I I know he's been like yeah. Man, he, he, but you know what's crazy? When him and Lil Pat before the draft, they came to one of our um, practices during the spring. Mm-hmm. And uh, this one, well, this one COVID had hit. I think it was a year before when COVID had hit. Yeah, and uh, they had came out the. Um, to one of um spring practice and they said yeah yeah he's lsu right now but at the end he's, he's going to switch to bama and sure enough yeah, that's what happened well obviously alabama recruited him for such a long time but you know what was it about alabama that, that really sold him you know but obviously the development of the db position but was there one or two things that really just sold him on on the tie um I really can't just give a. I really can't pinpoint it and say because uh, I, I wish he was here. He, he went to go work out, man. This kid, this kid, this kid. Love, he loves to work, you know. Uh, so he's uh, he's at the gym right now. Uh, but um, I just I just think that because I never wanted him to feel pressure, you know. I I can't imagine what he was getting in his inbox off social media and stuff like right. that. So when he came home, I wanted this to be his safe haven, you know. I didn't want him to feel like. Oh man, my dad talking to me like this. I gotta hear this. You know, I gotta get all these calls and stuff like that because I wanted it to be a smooth. Set. I wanted him to be able to think his way through and see it. But um, just um, I just think that um, just having that relation, that one on one relationship with Coach Saban, that was big to him. You know, to actually a guy at that caliber, you know, uh, arguably the the greatest coach of um, college football, uh, to actually build that relationship with him. You know. And I just read a, um, a nice article on, um, man, I can't come up with coach name, the famous defensive line coach. Uh, it was in Sports Illustrated. Uh, I just read oh, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I just, you're Yeah, I just read it yesterday. And he was like, uh, I don't even have Coach Saban phone number. So when he called, when, when, uh, when he called me, you know, it's from a block number. And I'm saying to myself, well, I think Earl got his phone number because they, they talk a lot. So, right. So, but I think I think Saban had a big, big part about it. And just, just Alabama, you know, I mean, it's, it's the it's 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 the, it's the standard, you know, and that's what he called. That's what he nicknamed himself as the defensive back, the standard. So, uh, I just think with Nick Saban and um, just the guys that he has produced in the NFL, uh, competing for national championships, are, I mean, every almost every year, every other year, um, graduation rate at um, uh, three 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 and a half years, something like that. They graduate in like eighty seven to eighty eight percent of their class, and it would be it would be it would be higher. So, so many guys wasn't so good and going to the NFL early. So, you know, that's that says a lot, you know, and um, and just just being able to be coached by someone almost like a Bill Belichick, which are those two guys are great friends. So and he's a DB coach, the head coach and the DB coach. So. Well, now we talked a few weeks ago and you were telling me uh, some stories about going up to Alabama's camp during the summer and just seeing. You know, Bryce Young leading the team. Talk about that a little bit. What you saw, and just from you know speaking to some of the players on the team. Yeah, it was uh, it was June. Um, it was uh, the unofficial visit that we went to. We did two unofficial visits. I think the first one was in June. I think the second one was in July. Uh, and um, when we were out there, and and we was out there watching those guys, they was they was doing their little warm up and walk through in the indoor facility, and that's where all the coaches was there. And then when they went outside. The coaches had to go upstairs and go in their office, and and and, and then they ran the um, the um, the players ran the practice, and the whole time I'm out there, actually, um, Peyton Manning brother was standing um, next to me. Um, he was standing next to me. Yeah, is it, is it Archie? What's his name? Uh, the, Cooper, or yeah, Cooper. Archie Cooper was at the camp. Uh, his dad. Yeah, yeah. So they were there, and uh, he was standing next to me, and uh, Jesse and I, um, we were standing together, and I said to her, I said, "Whoa!" I was like. You see how smooth this practice is run, being ran, and I was like, none of the coaches are out here. All those guys upstairs, you know, Bryce was running it. You know, all the other guys that were leaders on the team, there were nobody joking around and you know on the side playing. You had the D lineman and the O lineman was off to the to the other side doing um, one on ones, and then you had the seven on seven going on with the skill guys, and it was it was like a well oiled machine. I was very very impressed with that, and for that young man, you know, had, wasn't the starter. Um, didn't start a game the year before, and for him to go out there and be a leader, that said that said a lot, and that spoke a lot to me. Then he won the Heisman Trophy. How about that? Exactly. Yep. Uh, tell us something about Coach Saban that uh, not a lot of people may know about him. Uh, you guys went through the recruiting process, but you're you're a former player. You played in the league, and uh, you know, obviously were heavily recruited. But you know, what was something that you saw out of Coach Saban throughout this whole process? Um, 
when he the first when when everything opened back up um in january uh that's when that's when we were able to do the first um zoom call you know and um earl and i was on the zoom with with him and we were just talking ball and he did he did all the talking he did he did he did 95 percent of the talking and just hearing him talk about his program and, and you know and, and and not even talking about his accolades or anything like that. He's just talking about, you know, the process and and the way they go about doing things and you know X's and O's and, and stuff like that. To actually sit there and have one have that was one of my first conversations with him, extended conversations. Um that was that was very, very impressive. And um and just for him to say that, you know, he 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 want he want he won our son, you know, that that was big. And um you know, and, and, I, and I told him at the end, I, at the end of the conversation, I said, coach, I said, well, I'm just going to tell you, and I'm not saying it because he's my son. You know, I'm saying it, I'm saying it because it's, it's, it's the truth. He's built for Bama. You know, he has that type of mentality. He's that type of player. He's one of our coaches at Heritage, Mike Smith, who's our running back coach and also our strength and conditioning coach. He said, you know, he coached Sony Michelle, you know, all those, he trains a lot of those guys that come back in the off season. And he said, he said, Earl, he said, he said, your son, he said he's a throwback player. He could play in any era. He's strictly football, no BSing around. That's a kid right there that really wants it. You know, and that's basically what I was given to saving after listening to him talk about his program and the way it is. And also speaking with some of the players when we were on those visits and, you know, being up there a few times. Uh, actually, the last time we was up there, uh, not, not the official visit, um, the second unofficial visit. Messi, Messi was on the plane with us. He was on the flight. You know, we had a layover in Tampa. He got off in Tampa. You know, he was sitting next to me. He was sitting. We were. He had an aisle seat. I had an aisle. And Earl had an aisle. He was sitting behind Earl, and he said this to me and a few other guys that I talked to on the team said this. They put different different phrases the way they phrase where they put it, but they basically said, put it in a nutshell. If if you if you're not ready to work, Bam is not made for you. And and, and he told me that they speak highly of Earl. Um, he'd heard his name quite quite a bit out there from the coaches, and um, and that was my first. We just met him at the airport. We was getting ready to board the plane, you know, and um, and just to hear that, you know, like it's all about the work and hearing hearing it from different players. I know it's real. I mean, I know it's real because it's saving, you know. But right. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I always try to figure out who are the who are the real priority targets in Alabama's class. You know, everybody claims that they have an offer. They they have a top three with Alabama included. Some of those guys and you know, really don't have a committable offer from Alabama, but from really from day one, I always heard Earl Little Jr. is a priority target. He's a guy that we got to get in this recruiting class. You told me a couple of weeks ago that Coach Saban came in your home and uh, he and Earl sat down, you know, really talking, just talking ball, talking X's and O's. Um, yeah. And I, I thought that was pretty cool. Can you talk a little bit about that and, you know, what that experience was like just watching them uh, talk, talk ball with each other? Oops, my bad. He sat, <laughs> he sat right there in that seat right there. <laughs> right. And, Earl, and Earl was sitting right here where I'm sitting right now. Uh, and I was sitting over there. But, uh, yeah, um, it was just he was just going over coverages and talking about, um, you know, different ways how they can play on different formations, the way the game has changed. You know, it wasn't uh, – it's not just, old 21 personnel. It's more 10 and 11 personnel. They spread you out, you know, basically, you know, and then the way they were run – the way um, – Actually, we talked about the uh, the Oklahoma game that they played down here a few years ago, the Lil Pat's freshman year. And um, he was saying how in a bunch of routes, you know, inside the bunch, you know, somebody's going to come to the outside. You know, you got three guys bunched up. Somebody usually normally in a bunch route, somebody going to the outside. But what they were doing, they was taking everybody back to the ball. So he had to go back to the drawing board and, and how to defend it because they was killing them on it. And, um, but he, um, we talked about that. He talked about some of their coverages that, him and Earl has already had discussions with and talked about, you know, it was just new to me, but they already, they, they had already had that chemistry going, you know, and just, and just adding on to it, you know, and Earl's a smart player, you know, he's not just a hard worker on the field. He really studies the game. He loves the game. He, like he's, he, he's a complete football player, especially at this young age. He's very, very mature. Um, but, you know, just having those conversations with him, like I said, he really spoke, it was really X's and O's, probably about 99, 98% at the time he was here and like that, 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 that was big, you know, to actually talk ball with, 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 with a good ball coach like himself. So that, that was big. You know, I got in a little bit, him and I, you know, we was uh, discussing some things, you know, and going, talking about some coverages and understanding and, 
And so it, it, it was good, but mostly it was just him and Earl. You know, I'm just sitting on the sideline, just listening, you know, watching. So but it was pretty good. They say, you know, Earl's, you know, built for Bama. Uh, tell me, where do you see Earl playing in the Tide secondary? Because I, I, you know, I see him as a Minka Fitzpatrick type player. He, he can play, you know, really just about any position out there. He's a Swiss Army knife. But where do you see him playing? Yeah, uh, just to backtrack real quick, I know I went on about the whole saving thing. Um, the whole recruiting thing, um, you know, I said it. I said it in the article during the summer that he was the he was the he was their top recruit. Like you said, because he was a priority. Um, they would never say it, but I know what was told to me. And, and I'm not just trying to big him up, but that's right. that's just the impressive and the hard work that this kid has put in all his life to be on every school that we talk. You know, some of them could be blowing smoke or whatever, but uh, he was the top DB on everybody's board. You know. And one thing I loved about Saban, what he said that, that night sitting right there, he said, Earl, I can tell you um, what kid is a star. He said, because I don't, I don't look at the star. I look at the tape. You know, I look at the kid. And I get to know the kid. And that's, that's, those are the kids that I want. You know, and, and Earl, and he said, it, when he said in his interview that Earl was the top DB on their board all year. You know, forget everybody else, not dissing the other kid. Right. Because, and the reason being, the leading to the, the fall right into what you just asked, um, he's a Minka Fitzpatrick type player, and I he got a mixture. It's like to me, I see Minka, I see Jalen Ramsey, and I see Charles Woodson in Earl. So you can play Earl at the star, you can put him out on the island, you can play him at either safety position, you know. And one thing I told him when he first got to high school, when he was a freshman, he was like, Dad, I want to play safety, I want to play safety. You know, I played, played two years of safety in college, two years of corner. My first two years in the league, I played corner. And then when I got to Cleveland, it was like I was in high school. They said, well, what position do you want to play? Because you can play all of them. I said, I want to play safety. You know, and, uh, so, uh, so but, not to, but I, what I told them, I said, hey, man, just learn the defense. Because I didn't coach out the Heritage his fresh, freshman year. I was at FIU coaching. And I told him, I said, hey, just learn the defense. I said, you can always go play safety. Play the corner, play the nickel, the dime, you know, and then you can always go in the back end. And that's what he did, you know, and he can play them all. So, I could see him coming off the edge, blitzing. I could see him filling the BC gap um, versus the run. He's he's tall. He's, he's like I'm six one. He's taller than me now, you know. So he's, he's growing. So he's yeah. So uh, he's probably he's probably not touching six two, but he's close to it. Um, and he um, he's six one, but he had he's one eighty three. I know I see some stuff they have him six foot one seventy five, but he's he's six one one eighty three. But he's like a five nine, five ten guy in the slot with the quick feet, the hips. He's very, very fluid. You know, he he understands the game. You know, he knows football. You know, uh, just just his reaction, and you know, he just he's just a really good player for a kid to be that tall that can go in there and play in the slot. That says a lot about him because you know you can't put a Richard Sherman inside the slot at the start. Mm -hmm. You can't put some of these guys that's his height. You put him in at the start. You can't do that. When you have a guy that like that, like you say, uh, that some like uh, Coach Villar called him the Swiss Army knife, like you just said, you know, because he can do everything back there. Well, tell me, who was better coming out of high school? You were, you were your son. <laughs> well, I know for a fact he was number one DB on Coach Saban's board, so that says a lot right there. I was the number two DB in the nation coming out of high school. It was Bobby Taylor was number one. I was number two, and um, Ty Law was number three. You know, so all of us had long NFL careers and stuff like that. But uh, but I, I, all jokes aside, he's way ahead of me right now than what I was in high school coming out, even coming out. Because, like, the rankings don't mean anything to us. It don't mean anything. I just threw that out there because where they had me ranking, where they, where they, I just know for a fact. Some people got him, don't even have him, like, in the top ten with the rivals in the ESPN. But I know for a fact that every, in, no, I'm about to say NFL, uh, every college team that, that we talked to and that was recruiting him, he was the number one DB on that board. You know, when Mario came down here, he came to, came to our house that same day he got introduced. I knew for a fact that he was always the number one DB. Earl was a priority for him, you know. And so, but he's um, but yeah, man, he's way, he's way, he's way, he's way better than what I was, you know, uh, coming out of high school for real. That's no joke. Tell me the differences between you know your recruitment and his, because obviously you got this. Social media aspects is just insane right now. You got anybody and everybody that can message you and tell you uh, you need to come here or go there. Um, <laughs> you know, is that the biggest thing? Or 
Are there some other things that, that really stood out to you? Well, the social media is a big thing um, because it's, it, 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 it's good and it can be bad for for, for these kids. Mm-hmm. And one thing Earl has, Earl has, he has parenting. He got both his parents. And, and then he have a guy like myself that been through the whole recruiting stuff. Obviously, it's totally different, a little bit different um, than when I came out, like I said earlier, in the dinosaur years. But uh, <laughs> he, um, but he, it, it's, you just have to talk to your kids, man, and give it to them. And, and one thing I like, to, I like to say to these parents, you have to educate yourself on this recruiting because if you don't take charge and be, be involved with that recruiting, um, some of these high school coaches, some of these so-called street agents and these dudes that just want, and some coaches not even in it for the good of the kid. Anyway, they try, they think they can, they're going to get a job at another level. If right. they can get a kid to go to school there and stuff like that. So, you have to just educate yourself. So I always told him, don't ever get caught up in the stars. The whole star stuff, don't get caught up in that. Mm-hmm. You know, just remain focused. Remain focused on your classwork, which he's a 4.0 student. Um, and then and then just concentrate on football. Don't cheat, don't cheat the weight room. I told him, I said, Mike Smith would be is your best friend. All this what I said to him was his freshman year. And one thing about the kid, he listens. You know, he listens. He don't think he's he's better than anybody. And I think I tweeted it out the other day. Um it gave me chills. You know, I was talking to him about a couple of um, kids that was in his class that they had ranked, ranked higher than him. And I was like, man, I was watching, he was coming from the barbershop and I was watching them um, earlier that day. I was watching um, their highlights. And I was like, man, these, these boys don't come, these boys don't come close to this kid, you know, right. you know, and, and he said, dad, he was like, he said, he said, he's honestly, he said, I don't even care about no star. He's out of love ball. And when he said that, it gave me chills. It still gave me chills right now when I think about it. And when he said that, I said, you know what? He's ready. I said, he, he, he listens to what I say to him. Well, it came down to Alabama, Florida State, and in, uh, in Miami. I know uh, Mario came down and saw him. We talked about this. Love Mario. Great guy. Yeah. I, know, I know you like him a lot as well. Um, have you caught, caught a lot of grief for him going to Bama instead of Miami? No, no, actually, actually, I haven't. You know, um, I see some of the um, some of the um, the comments on Twitter, and um, honestly, out of it was over a thousand people um, when I post those pictures. Um, I have not, I have not heard anything. I think I think it was maybe like one dude had like rolling the uh, emoji rolling his eyes, and then some some uh, some some dude had. Um, he said, "Oh, he'll be in the portal. He'll be at Miami. He's gonna he'll be in the portal soon." You know, I'm just like, "Damn, dude, you guys, you guys are that butt hurt that this kid didn't go to Miami." You know, I mean, it's his decision to make. Like, if it's that serious to you, you create your child and you dictate wherever he wants to go to school. Right. Exactly. You know, we we don't do that in a little household. You know, I wanted to make sure that he saw everything out. Um, he took all his visits that he wanted to take, and he could have took. He could have went back to USC. He told them no. He canceled his visit to LSU, um, so he, he didn't go on that one. He canceled his visit to Florida, um, so um, uh, he, he could have took advantage of all those opportunities. So, uh, so no, I really haven't gotten no grease. I got a. There, there are more. There are more great Kane fans than a couple of the little trolls that are out there. You know, mm-hmm. man, I, I got, I got, I got. Um, what you what? I got that right nostrils skin high. You know, I'm, I'm built tough, man. I, you gotta I have it. You gotta yeah, have it. I come from a tough area down in Miami, man, and um, and that's one thing. I Earl didn't grew up in the same neighborhood I grew up in. You know, obviously I was blessed enough to you know to um, make it, you know, make it out. And um, but I instilled that toughness in him. You know, and uh, any way you're from, you they say where you at, that's bull crap. Because I had some people because they'll see him when he was little. People used to look at him, oh, look pretty boy, this, this, and that. All right, wait, wait till you get on that field with him and see, see how he go. What's something that you can tell us about your son that a lot of people don't know? It can be on the field or off the field. Man, he's a big he, – he, he's funny as heck. He has a great sense of humor. Uh, he, he's a humble kid, but he has a great sense of humor. But if you had to drop me off, him and I off in the woods in a while, he'll survive. I'll probably die. <laughs> he's, he's a city boy, but he got that country boy in him, you know. I took him to fish behind our house uh, when he was five years old. You know, you get the little kitty fishing poles, a little. And I was sitting there on, on we were sitting there um, on the bank, and I'm in a chair, and and I'm just on my phone. He's he casting it out, and then 
I hear him say, <gasps> you know, I, I look up and he's like, I got a fish. He's five years old. I'm like, yeah. And I look and sure enough, it's a, it's a little bass. He's probably about that big. And he was hooked ever since. And I don't know how to fish. You know, I went fishing with my granddad. My granddad had those old cane poles and mosquitoes was biting the hell out of me. It was hot and humid. You know, I was like, man, it took too long. I'm, I'm ready to go. But Earl, he taught himself how to fish off YouTube, you know, so he's a big time fisher. He, he, he goes snorkeling. He does the, the spear fishing. He got his license for that. He loves fresh water and salt and, and salt water fishing. So that's one of the big things that he loves to do outside of football, besides being a gamer as well. Right, right. Well, tell me, one of the final things I want to ask you is, you know, he's got a few months before he gets to Bama. What are you guys going to be doing to get him ready? Um, um, I'm pretty sure um, – we uh, I get him up there, um, maybe during spring break or sometime during the spring, um, so he can go hang out up there. Um, probably we'll probably spend a week up there. You know, we can be able to go watch practice every day, you know, and, and things like that. And um, uh, and just just um, try to hopefully we can get some Zoom calls with those guys. I'm not sure uh, how the NCAA goes on about that, so hopefully we can get some Zoom calls and be inside the. Um, the installs and stuff like that. Uh, just a heritage, you know, you can't graduate early. You know, it's a private school. So, you know, you, uh, you know how that is. So they, um, that's the only reason why he's not, cause he, he he's ready to go right now. Uh, yeah. So he just can't, but I think um, with his knowledge and the way he worked, once he get up there in early June, I'm not even worried about it. He, he's going to be competing for, uh, for a starting position. I can tell you that right now. Well, I know he's excited. I know uh, I know you guys are uh, are real proud of him, and uh, you know it, it certainly has been an honor to uh, to have you on the show and to talk to you. Um, you know, these last few weeks leading up to his decision, and and, and I don't get a chance to say this too often because there's so many kids that are top end guys that you know they kind of shut things down. They don't talk to a lot of media, but Earl was always just so respectful towards me, uh, always responsive. And, uh, you know, I really do appreciate that because, I mean, every every conversation we had was was outstanding. And I know Alabama fans who watch this program, who read our website on BamaInsider.com, have always been, you know, really excited about him. Even though they, he wasn't committed, everybody always felt like <laughs> he was a Bama guy and he was always going to end up at Bama. So uh, I know Alabama fans are really excited about him, and, um, and I know you, you and your wife and family are real proud. I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you a secret. I, did, I didn't know, right? So, you know, uh, Jesse had told him, she was like, listen, we don't want no surprises on National Signing Day. So we want to know before you tell everybody else. And so, and I was thinking like, all right, he's going to tell us uh, like the day before, you know, the night before, which he eventually, he eventually did. But the daddy was left out, you know, <laughs> uh, not that day. I was told he actually, uh, he was, he, he was really considering, um, you know, like not, not, he wasn't hard on Florida state, but they did a great job recruiting. I got to get a, the FSU coach Norville, you know, he was doing, he did a great job. Mario did uh Mario did an excellent job uh on recruiting him, but uh, he said uh, after he came back from the LSU week, he he knew where he went when he played when Bama played LSU on his official visit. He said he he, he knew where he was going to go to school then, and so he just wanted to, he knew and Saban knew, so obviously it was like a solid commit, you know. Right. And so <laughs> uh, and so he uh so but he let the world he let the world know so, but I didn't find out until uh, like 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 that. But uh, Tuesday, right? <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. one thing one thing I want to say before we go, man. Yeah. Um, thank you to thank you to all the, the Bama fans, you know, the FSU fans, and of course the Miami fans that 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 support him because they're more supporter than haters. Uh, but but I definitely uh, we definitely we, we can feel the good vibes and you know from the Bama fans and you know and, and stuff like that. And I can tell you, this kid he's going to give you guys his all. Uh, he loved the game. Uh, his passion for the game is uh, like. Put it, he's equal to Ray Lewis. You know, he may he may not be that passionate like Ray, but his love for the game is up there. You know, Ray is his uncle, and um, actually Ray daughter, Ray daughter uh, Diamond, she um she just graduated from um from Bama, and um and 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 I talked to Ray prior to doing all this stuff, and and Ray was like, hey man, he was like, you know, we love our school, but it's 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 it's, it's his decision that he need to make, and I was like, exactly, you know, um, because you know he he wanted to know where we're Earl going, and and when he found out um. When we was at the school, when he announced it, he texted me. He was like, "Roll Tide." <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. So, thank. Uh, I just want to thank the Bam Bama Nation. So, you guys got a good one coming in, and trust me, he's gonna give it. He's gonna give you all. 
You know, he's not going. He's not going to cheat because his, he he wants to be the best. He he definitely wants to be a national champion. He wants to win the Thorpe Award. Well, we've seen some great ones from uh, from South Florida at Alabama these last uh, these last several years, and many yes, of them have uh, been superstars for the Crimson Tide. And I know Alabama fans are excited about Earl, and hopefully he's uh, he's that next in line. So, uh, so that's <laughs> him, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see uh, here in Tuscaloosa here in the next few months. Yes, sir. And uh, I don't know what number he's going to get. They sent him a couple of numbers, but you know you can't get two right now because two is taken. So uh, I'm not sure what he. Uh, I'm not. Sure. I see. I see Eli Ricks there. So that's uh, that. That's going to be good. You know, uh, see him and Earl and, and the rest of the guys in the secondary back there. Malachi, that's my little dude right there. I like Malachi. I like him a lot. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what that secondary is going to be able to do these next few years. But uh, but best of luck. Merry Christmas to you guys. I hope you have a great holiday. And uh, thanks again for the interview. All right. Thank you for having us. And thank you guys for showing so much love to the young man. And, Roll tie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, brother. You're a little senior. Take care. Oh.